Last week, we had the honor and privilege of hosting the annual Global Bitcoin Summit, a Human Rights Foundation event at Bitcoin Park in Nashville, Tennessee. This is my short presentation on why Noster matters. I hope you find it helpful. Just a little bit of information on myself. I've been focused on freedom tech adoption and the broader movement for a little over a decade now. That's on the charity side. That's on the venture side. That's on the community side in Nashville and as a volunteer for the Human Rights Foundation in a educational role for the last six years. So I'm going to give a quick brief tech overview and then I'm going to move to the bigger picture. At the core of Noster is that it is an open protocol. There is no leader, nobody controls it, and there is no permission required to use it or build on it as you see fit. The foundational element is this idea of a identity. The identity is simply a public key, private key pair. You can spin up as many as you want. You can connect any information you want to it, and you can slowly build a verifiable reputation over time. One example I like to use is Airbnb. I've been using Airbnb for about a decade now, and I've built up a reputation there as a as a good guest that hosts would like to have. But all of that reputation is stuck in Airbnb's walled garden. That is their product. They do not open it up to others to use. In a Noster world, you could take that reputation in one aspect of your life, and then you can use it for other things, like applying for a loan, applying for a job, opening any kind of account you want that requires some kind of social credit. You can almost think of it as an open social credit score uh, rather than the closed dystopian systems that we're seeing a lot of governments and companies implement. Then you have this aspect of Nostra called notes. These are events. You can have events of many different kinds. You broadcast them out to the world. They are signed by your identity. Anyone anywhere in the world can verify that you are the one who committed that event and they can verify that you have not that it hasn't been altered or changed they can do that locally they can do that without permission they can do that without trusting anybody else then we have relays relays are simply servers that hold these events there will be many different types of relays relay operators have different goals and can choose different rules on what events they store on their network two easy examples are we have a bitcoin park relay that only holds events of our members. Anyone can read from that relay and see those events, but only our members can post to them. Another example is the Primal Relay. Primal is attempting to store every event they see from around the world by anyone. Those are two extremes of different types of relays, but we'll see many different variations in between. Then you have clients. Clients are simply apps that you use to interact with the network. They allow you to connect to relays. They show you information in different ways. There are many different types of clients. There are many different types of apps. I expect that ecosystem to grow over time. Big picture. So I like to think about Nostrick a voice, freedom, truth perspective. So we'll start with voice. We are seeing censorship around the world increase. Um, I expect this trend to unfortunately continue. Centralized platforms are easy to pressure, they're easy to control, they have leaders that might have their own bias or they might be forced by governments to comply with different censorship requirements. We saw Twitter ban the sitting president of the United States. We saw Facebook ban the sitting president of the United States. This is one of the most powerful people in the world. If they can do it to him, it should be expected that they will do it to people in much lower positions of power. Elon Musk has since bought Twitter and renamed it to X. I pick on him a little bit in this presentation, but it's important to realize that in the, the broader aspect of centralized platforms, he, he is one of the better ones in terms of free speech, but even he is, is doing broad-based censorship and implementing his own bias uh, throughout his platform. So that's why I choose him. But you can pretty much be certain that the other platforms, the other centralized platforms are even worse. Recently, we've seen him implement a lot of censorship out of India with the Modi regime. We also saw Brazil straight up ban his app because they wanted more censorship. He put up a big face, said that he would not comply. It appears that he is complying. 
with all of their requests going forward. It's also not just government censorship. We've seen him take the at music handle from someone who had it for 16 years ago. If you are using a centralized platform, you are completely at the mercy of the leaders that are in control. Last but not least, let's take it from him directly. Ilana said that if this election results in Vice President Harris winning, he might get arrested and thrown in jail, X might get banned. They also just recently released their first global transparency report for the first half of 2024. They got 72,703 removal requests and they complied with nearly 71% of them. So 51,487 times they complied with the government's request to remove content on X. Let's move to freedom. It's not just the users of these apps that are at their mercy. It's also people building on top of them. We've seen both Reddit and X recently jack up their API prices and close off API access. This means that people that are building apps that rely on these centralized platforms went out of business and just, just couldn't continue building their own apps. So if you build on these centralized platforms, you're basically building on quicksand and you have no control over your destiny. This is a non-exhaustive example of the many different social apps that all use Noster. You can take your identity, you can move between them at will. At the end, the user has choice on how they want to use Noster. And this is a non-exhaustive example of all the many different Noster enabled apps where you can move your identity between and use for various different things. So let's move to truth. This may or may not have been a tweet that Elon sent. He may have deleted it. I don't know. It's impossible to verify if it actually happened or if it did not happen in a world that is increasingly seeing more and more deep fakes and fake news being in a situation where you can't easily verify the truth is becoming more and more of a concern. This is a note that I broadcasted to the world using Noster. This is the raw data of that note. So this is the raw data that relays are holding. Maybe some relays are holding it, some relays are not. If you remember back to my earlier slide on relays, the thing about relays is there's no global state of Noster. Some events will be some places, some events will be other places. But you can pretty much expect that if something is considered important by someone, they will store it. And this is what the raw data looks like. This is my identity. This is the hash of the message. This is the hash of the event. So you can prove that it hasn't been changed. And this is the signature. So this is how you can verify that my identity was what signed this event and that it hasn't been changed over time. Cool part is you can you can do this with media too. So we're seeing more and more deep fakes. In blue here is the hash of my recent podcast with Marty. So you can prove on your own without trusting anyone else this podcast was broadcast by us and that it hasn't been changed when you view it. Incredibly powerful. I mean, at this point right now, Noster is the only network at scale where you are able to prove yourself that something hasn't been deep faked or altered. Last but not least, Noster has Freedom Money integrated. So you can send Bitcoin around the world without permission to anyone you want, and you can move between apps, and that contact list goes with you. You can think of it almost like a freedom-focused Venmo, but on an open protocol level. So you have the open protocol that is Noster, as a broadcast mechanism and communication mechanism. And then you have the open protocol that is Bitcoin. That is a money that you can use without trust. And they seamlessly interrupt with each other. I will leave you on this note from Fascinating on Noster. In a world where data is centralized, sold, and often used to manipulate behavior, Noster offers a path toward a more open, user-controlled internet. For those who value freedom of expression, privacy, and control over their digital identity, Noster is a crucial step forward. It empowers individuals, resists censorship, and fosters innovation, making it a vital part of the conversation about the future of the internet. Thank you. Keep building. Consider checking out Noster. I hope you found this helpful.